Hello everyone, today we are going to study the design and drawing of a siphon well drop and it is included in the civil engineering subject design of hydraulic structures module 3 and it is a fifth design and this subject is included in the sixth semester. First of all, let us see what a siphon well drop is. So it is a kind of a canal drop and it is constructed when a road crosses a canal and at the same point we have to provide a change in elevation or we have to provide a drop. So a siphon well drop consists of an inlet, inlet well with a pipe at its bottom carrying a well from the inlet well to the downstream well or system. So this is the inlet well and this is a pipe. Okay, This pipe carries a water which is falling into this well to the downstream side and this is a downstream well. So this will be the canal before the well and it will be usually trapezoidal section and it will be having a full supply level then bank level etc and here the water from the canal is falling into this well through a trapezoidal notch okay so and this is a rod section above this pipe okay so this pipe goes under the rod section and this is a drain provided for the rod section and this is a embankment on side of the rod section and the water falls into the inlet well through the trapezoidal notch constructed in the side of the well. So this is a trapezoidal notch will be coming here and the notch will regulate the flow into the well and also maintain proper supply level in canal upstream. Here what you see in the screen is a schematic representation of a siphon well drop. Okay. So this is the only photo that is available for this siphon well draw then that's it is actually taken from a book so it is not so clear but we can see this is the upstream canal portion through here water flows and this is a trapezoidal section and this is a berm of the canal and this is a embankment okay these are all the embankment and the this is a berm wood and this is the upstream well and the water flows into the well okay and this is the rod section and usually in most of the questions this road section is uh, given as a cart cart track so that is for the uh, movement of bullock carts and this is a downstream well section and from here the water MA, uh, again flows through the trapezoidal section and we can see the semicircular portion this is the top of the downstream well and this semicircular section of the downstream well is provided at the top of the embankment level and at the bottom here uh, you can you can't see it there but at the level of the canal also the remaining of this well actually this well is as we know it is circular and it's half of its or the half of the semicircular section will be at the top of the embankment and remaining half will be at the level of the canal itself and water flows from the well into this canal so this is a siphon well drop now let us see <clears throat> now the inlet will also act as an energy dissipator by creating a water cushion in the inlet well so we will be providing a depth of water here and this depth of water will act, uh, act as a cushion for the falling water which is falling from at a height okay the downstream well is necessary when the discharge is greater than 0.29 cumex and otherwise the water will be directly allowed to the downstream canal the siphon well drop is suitable for smaller discharges and larger drops so this kind of uh, structure is constructed for smaller discharge discharges and when the discharge is greater than 0.29 cumex we will be providing a downstream well like this that is the first figure and if there is no downstream well that is that condition is used when the discharge is less than 0.29 cumex or meter cube per second so this is the condition when there is no downstream well okay so there will be a fall like this and there will be a hume pipe and the water will be directly flowing there will not be any downstream well here and this is a condition for uh, condition when the discharge is greater than 0.29 meter cube per second and here we'll be providing a downstream well like this no, 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 no. 
So let us see the question. Define a siphon filter of crossing a car track with the following hydraulic particulars. As I have said, most of the questions will be having a car track above the drop. So it can be a road also. Okay. So first let us see channel upstream of drop. These are the details of the channel for the upstream side of the drop. Discharge is 0.3. Then bed width is 1.25. Bed level is 20 meters. Then full supply depth is given as 0.6 meters. Full supply level is 20.6. And top of bank 1 meter wide at level 21.6. And similarly, the details for the channel downstream of drop is also given. So here discharge is 0 0.30 chemix that is above 0 0.29. Hence, we have to uh, provide a downstream well also. Also, remaining details both the upstream and downstream are at there are 1 meter wide berms at ground level. And slopes of the channel section in cutting and embankment are. 1 is to 1 and 1.5 is to 1 that we will see when we solve the question and the car track is 5 meter wide at a level of 20.5 and this may be assumed as the general ground level also provide 1 meter cash strains on either side of the car track and it is also said that uh, good soil for foundation is available at 19 meters at the level of 19 meters so let us move on to the steps these are the steps of design uh, that is required for this problem. So first is the velocity. We have to find out the velocity of flow in the barrel and here we will be also finding out the diameter of the barrel also. Then we have to design the car track between the wells and it can be a car track or a road section. Then third we have to find out the head causing flow or the head loss in the barrel. That is barrel means we are referring the pipe that is connecting the upstream and downstream well. Then we have to design the trapezoidal notch. There is a, there will be a trapezoidal notch provided at the top of the upstream well through which the water will be falling into the well. So we have to design the dimensions of the trapezoidal notch. Then we have to design the inlet well, that is upstream well itself. Then we have the downstream well or the outlet well. Then we have to fix the final dimensions of the siphon barrel. And finally, we have to give some protection works. That is, protection works are provided just before the upstream well and just after the upstream well for protection of bed and banks of the canal section. So step one, velocity of flow in the barrel. So first let us see discharge in the canal is given as 0 0.3 cumex. Now we are going to assume one row of RC Hume pipes. RC Hume pipes is simply uh, pipes with large diameter constructed using reinforced concrete. Now it is having a diameter of 500 mm and this 500 mm we are assuming first and then area of the barrel is found out that is pi by 4 d square that is equal to 0 0.196 meter square and from this we are going to calculate the velocity of flow in the barrel as b is equal to q by a that is discharge by area so you will be getting in the dis, uh, velocity as 1.53 meter per second and this velocity should be less than 3 meter per second the usual limit is 2 to 3 meter per second it should be between 2 and 3 and it should be greater than 3 and less than 2 and if this value is not getting that is if it is uh, less than 2 or greater than 3 change the diameter of the pipe or provide more rows or less rows okay now as i have said we have first assumed the uh, diameter of the pipe as 500 mm that is because the diameter of rcc hume pipes available in the market are like this 80 mm 100 mm like this these are the diameters of pipes available in the market so you have to choose one of these also here we are choosing 500 mm now next is permissible velocity of flow in the siphon barrel is as I have said it should be between 2 to 3 meter per second siphon barrel or Hume pipe that is the velocity of flow in the pipe. Now step 2 is the car track section between the wells that is the design of car track section. So here it is given as car track and it can be also can also be a roadway and the car track width of the car track is given in the question as 5 meters and then we have different levels given that is uh, 22 meters is the height of the upstream or the wall of the upstream well. Then we have a bund or the top of the embankment is taken as 2 meters. Then we have the level of that embankment is given in the question as 21.6 and level of the rod is taken as 20.5. Then we have 1 meter width. The width of the drain provided is given as 1 meters. Then uh, we have some slopes given that is for 
the portion in filling the slope is given as 1.5 is to 1 and for the portion in cutting is given as slope is given as 1.1 uh, 1 is to 1 so that means <clears throat> this is a general ground level as per the question so anything below this is cutting so this side and th uh, this side will be having a cutting of or slope of 1 is to 1 then anything above this level 20.5 level is filling so that is that slope that means this slope is will be 1.5 is to 1 so will be uh, we what we need to calculate is this length that is from this point to this point that is the length of the rc hume pipe so first let us see x is equal to we have a big summation coming up so first component is 0 0.45 that is a width of this wall that is a width of the wall of upstream well that's a masonry uh, wall and that thickness we have assumed as 0.45 then we have the top of the embankment is or width of the embankment as 2 meters then we need to calculate this horizontal length this length so we have two levels that is 21.6 and 20 so that difference in level is 21.6 minus 20 multiplied by the slope that is 1.5 that will be this horizontal distance so that is 21.6 minus 20 into 1.5 then again we have the width of the drain that is given us 1 meters that is given the question now next we need to calculate this width okay this width and for that we have two levels that is this level is 20.5 and this level is 20 so that level difference is 20.5 minus 20 multiplied by the slope given that is 1 is to 1 so into 1 so that is we got this distance that is this distance is given by this calculation this calculation then we have the width of the roadway that is 5 meters then again we have this same calculation will be coming here also that is we need to calculate this width and for that the same method is applied so this is a calculation for that width then again we have the width of the drain that is 1 meter then again we have the calculation as we did here that is we need to find out this width that is this top level is 20.6 20.6 minus bottom level is 20 multiplied by the slope 1.5 so then next is width of this top of the embankment that is 2 meters then we have a minor slope here also that is 20.6 minus 20 into 1 then we have this width that is 0 0.45 now summing up all these we will be getting the value of 16.8 meters that is this x is equal to 16.8 meters now assume this or this x is equal to 16.8 but we have the uh, rc hume pipe is available in lengths of 2.5 meters only so we have to take the length as a multiple of 2.5 so just round up to the uh, round to the next multiple of 2.5 that is 17.5 so x will be we will be taking x as 17.5 meters so we have just found out the length of the uh, siphon barrel in the previous step that is we got it as 17.5 meters so the what you see in the screen is a total drawing that we have to draw after completing the design now i am just showing to, uh, going to show the component that we have just designed that is the length of the siphon barrel so this length of this pipe is what we obtained just now as 17.5 meters and we have said each the length of pipe available commercially is only 2.5 meters that is why we have provided some joints in between so we can see there is one two three four five six and seven so seven number of pipes are provided here with joints in between so these are the section of <coughs> section we provide uh, where we provide the joints between the pipes now next is step three that is head causing flow or loss of head in the barrel so that means we are going to find out h and this head causing flow is this height and for th this height and for that we have an equation known as unwin's formula we have learned this in during the design of siphon aqueduct 
So we have h is equal to 1 plus f1 plus f2 into L by R whole multiplied by V square by 2G. And here we are neglecting the velocity of approach. That means velocity of approach means the velocity through which uh, of the water that is flowing in the canal. So we are neglecting that velocity for calculation using this equation. And here h is a head causing flow in meters. That is as I have said this height. Head causing flow that is a level difference between this level and downstream FSL. Okay, so this is a downstream or water level in the downstream well that is downstream FSL. And this is a water level in the well. And the level difference between that is a uh, level difference between that is a head causing flow. Now next is length of barrel. Length of barrel. L is the length of barrel in meters that we have found out. This is the length of barrel. Then R is the hydraulic mean radius of barrel. Then V is the velocity of flow through the barrel in meter per second. We have found out that earlier. Then F1 is the coefficient of head loss at entry which depends upon the mouth shape of the barrel. And F2 is the coefficient which accounts for the friction in the barrel. And it is given by A into 1 plus 0.3 B by R. And here A and B are constants depending upon the material of the pipe. Now we are going to calculate the head causing flow that is small h. And this is equation and in which we have F1, F2. First F1 is taken as 0 0.505. And that is based on the shape of the barrel entrance. So here we are providing an unshaped mouth. So here the shape of this uh, entrance of this pipe is the shape of the pipe itself and if that mouth is or the entrance is bell mouthed the value is 0 0.08 so here we are providing an unshaped mouth so the value is 0 0.505 now next is f2 for f2 we have said there is an equation a into 1 plus 0 0.3 b by r and here we need a b and r and a and b are obtained from the type of the material for smooth cement pipe the value is value of a is 0 0.00316 and b is 0 0.1 and R, R is the hydraulic radius that is A by P that is vetted area by vetted perimeter and for a circular section it is D by 4. So we are taking, uh, we can, we will be getting the value 0.13. Now substituting all these values in equation for F2, you will be getting F2 as 0.0039 that is substituted here 0.0039. Now after that we have L, L is the length of the pipe we have calculated that earlier as 17.5. Then again we have R is 0 0.13, then V, V is velocity of flow through the pipe, we have calculated it the first step, that is 1.53 divided by 2 into acceleration due to gravity, that is 9.81. So after uh, calculating all this, you will be getting the head causing flow as 0 0.24 meters, that is you will be getting this height as 0 0.24 and so now water level in the upstream well is equal to FSL of downstream well plus head causing flow. So FSL of downstream well is given as 19.6 in the question plus head causing flow is 0 0.24. Therefore, full supply, uh, sorry, water level in the upstream well is 19.84. Now step 4 is the design of trapezoidal notch. That is, trapezoidal notch is provided at the entrance into the upstream well. So we have to design that notch. First we have sill of the notch is equal to 20 meters that is greater than 19.84. Sill of the notch is provided at 20 meters and this 20 meters is a bed level in the upstream channel section this 20 meters okay and the sill of the notch will be at the same level itself. Now that should be greater than 19.84 and this 19.84 is a water level in well. That means this notch should not be in submerged condition. The upstream uh, water level in the upstream well is calculated as 19.84 in the previous step and the sill of the notch should be above that value. Now and if that condition is satisfied the notch discharges freely. Okay, That means if the sill of the notch is above sorry the sill of the notch is below this 19.84 which is a water level in the up, uh, down, upstream well then the notch will be submerged. We have to avoid that condition. Now for discharge through a trapezoidal notch we have an equation that is q is equal to 2.99 c d raised to 3 by 2 into l plus 0 0.4 nd and this is an actually an approximated equation and 
actually the discharge through a trapezoidal notch is calculated using uh, the equations for discharge through a triangular notch and a rectangular notch that is we are dividing the notch into two triangular notches and a rectangular notch and we have approximated that is a very long equation and uh, it's very tedious calculation so for simplicity we are using this equation for discharge through a trapezoidal notch where q is a discharge in the qmx uh, so discharge in Qmax, then we have C is a coefficient of discharge, which is taken as 0 0.7. Okay, 0 0.7, there is no D there. Then D is equal to upstream full supply depth. Then L is the length of the notch or width of the sill. That is, L means, here L means, that is a, this uh, base width of the trapezoidal notch, not the channel. Don't get confused. This is a, L is the length of notch, which is represented as the width of the notch that we are providing or though sorry base width of the notch then n is equal to 2 tan alpha where alpha is this value so n is equal to 2 tan alpha okay then where alpha is inclination of the sides of the notch to the vertical then we have in this equation we have two unknowns that is l and n so we require two equations and we are assuming the coefficient of discharge CD, this is CD, is equal to 0 0.7. Now to obtain two equations, we are considering two conditions, that is a full supply condition and half supply condition. For full supply condition, we have discharge is equal to 0 0.3 and uh, upstream water depth or full supply depth is equal to 0 0.6 in the upstream canal section. Now this is the equation for discharge. Now substituting the values, we have 0 0.3 is equal to 2.99 plus uh, C, that is the coefficient of discharge is 0 0.7. Then depth is 0 0.6 raised to 3 by 2 into L plus 0 0.4 N into D, which is again 0 0.6 itself. So, so uh, simplifying that, you will be getting an equation like this. Name it as equation 1. Then we have for half supply discharge, the discharge will be half of the initial value, that is 0 0.3 by 2, that is equal to 0 0.15 meter cube per second. And if the half supply depth is not given, sometimes in the question, the half supply depth will, give, will be given. And if it is not given, take it as H is equal to zero, uh, 3 by 4 of the full supply depth, that is 0 0.6. So, it is equal to 0 0.45. So, substituting all the values, we will be getting an equation L plus 0 0.18 N is equal to 0 0.2374. So, name it as second equation. Now, by solving this equation 1 and equation 2, so solving that equations 1 and 2, you will be getting the value of n as 1.18, which is equal to 2 tan alpha. From this, you will be getting the alpha as 30 degree 32 minutes and L, that is the width of the notch as, sorry, length of the notch, which is taken as the bottom width of the notch. That is a trapezoidal section. So L is equal to 0 0.025, is equal to 2.5 centimeters. So take it as 3 centimeters. So we have the base width of the notch is 3 cm and this angle is obtained as 30.32. From this, you can find out the top width. So, that is equal to width of the notch at FSL. That is the top width of the notch. That is at 20.6 meters. We have 0 0.03. That is the base width plus 2 into, that is 2 multiplied by this width. That is equal to 0 0.6 tan 30 degree 32 minutes. That is, you will be getting this value that is very simple calculation so multiplied by 2 you will be getting the width of notch at FSL as 0 0.074 meters which is equal to 74 centimeter so you will be getting this value as 74 centimeters now next is step 5 that is the design of inlet well we are going to design the upstream well so the upstream well is a masonry well with internal diameter of 1.25 meters and it is taken as equal to the bed width of the canal. The bed width of the canal is given as 1.25 meters. So, you will be taking the diameter of the inlet well as equal to the bed width of the upstream canal. Then, the top level is a slightly above the canal bank. So, the top level of the well, this is the top level of the well that is given at a height slightly above the bank of the canal. So, the bank of the canal is at 21.6 and hence top level of well is 21.6 plus 0.4. This height is 0 0.4. So, this level is 22 meters. Then, the bottom level of the masonry well may be fixed at 
18.6 meters and that is just below the level of good foundation available good foundation availability which is given as 19 meters so in the question it is said that good foundation is available at 19 meters so we are taking the bottom level of masonry uh, well at a height of 18.6 such that the foundation of this upstream well can be located at located where so uh, good foundation is available so we are taking that as just below if this is 90 meters where good foundation soil is available we are taking this foundation just below that level so we are taking it as 18.6 and below this a foundation concrete of 60 centimeter thick is provided so this thickness is 60 centimeters so this level is 18.6 minus 0 0.6 that is equal to 18 meters then so from that you can find out the height of the well that is 22 the top level minus bottom level 18.6 is so the height of the well is 3.4 meters and the thickness of the wall of the well should be such that it should resist the lateral pressure so in this problem the thickness of the wall is assumed as 45 centimeters or otherwise you have to calculate the thickness using computations for lateral earth pressure now this is the uh, whole figure that we are going to draw after this numerical design design now just now what we designed was uh, this part that is this upstream well so as we can see here this top level is what we first gave a value of 22 meter this is a level of the top of upstream well that we found it out as 22 meters that is just 0.4 meters above the bank level of the canal that is 21.6 then uh, we found out the depth of the upstream well that is we obtained this level as 18.6 that is just below the level of good soil availability then after that we assumed a thickness of 60 centimeter for the foundation concrete so this height is 0 0.6 and this level is 18 meters so the height of the well that we just designed was we got it as 3.4 that is the level difference between this level and this level that is 22 minus 18.6 that is equal to 3.4 meters we also assumed the thickness of the well or the thickness of the wall of the well as 0 0.45 meters that is this thickness or this thickness now step 6 we have the design of the downstream well and the downstream well is a masonry well with internal diameter of 1.25 meters and we are taking the diameter of the masonry downstream well as similar to how we found out the diameter of the upstream masonry well that is the trapezoidal section at the downstream side is having a bed width of 1.25 meters so we are taking the internal diameter of the downstream well as equal to this 1.25 meters that is a bed width of the downstream section so and the thickness of the uh, masonry wall is taken as 0.45 meters and also the downstream well will be provided such that it has two different heights as shown in figure that means on one side the top level will be at 20 and the other side of the well the level will be, will be at 19 meters and this side of the upstream well that is this side will be having an earthen embankment and the road will be or the car track is provided here so this side is known as the earth side of the downstream well and this side is a, uh, having or the other side is having canal here so the cross section will or the actual structure or the downstream well will look like this this is the top of the earth side of the downstream well so this is the top of earth side or this side okay this is that side and this side will will be this is the, uh, the other side of the downstream well so here it will be 19 meters and here it will be 20 meters and water will be emerging out through here that is from here to here so as we said it will be having a level difference of 1 meters that is 20 meter minus 19 meter so this level difference of one side of the well and the other side of the well is 1 meter 
and it is provided because if we provide 20 meter height here the water will not be able to go out of this well so for that for easy for flowing of water that is coming through the siphon barrel to the canal section downstream we are providing this side or the other side of the downstream well 1 meter lower than the upstream side now that is what is provided here the top level of the well for semicircular portion on the earth side is 20 meters and the top level of well for semicircular portion on the rear canal bed level on the rear which is equal to the canal bed level okay that is equal to 19 meters so this height is equal to canal bed level okay then only the water will be flowing from here to the downstream side and the bottom level of the masonry well may be fixed at 17.6 meters and that is taken such that uh, it is 1 meter below the bottom level of upstream well that is uh, in the previous step we have found out the bottom level of upstream well as 18.6 meters so we are going to take 1 meter below this level that is minus 1 minus 1 that is equal to 17.6 meters that is because here 1 meter is a drop provided that is that is the difference between the upstream bed level and downstream bed level so we are giving this uh, siphon barrel at a minus slope of 1 meter okay so we have earlier found out the horizontal length of this siphon pipe so now we have to recalculate the sloping length using this height that we provided or the uh, high level difference between the inlet and outlet of the siphon barrel also in the bottom a foundation concrete of 60 centimeter thick is provided that is this is 60 centimeter thick foundation concrete and this level is 17 meters so this is what we have designed now this is a upstream sorry downstream well and this is a wall of the downstream well so this is the top of the downstream well wall on the earth side this is the earth side so this is the top that is 20 meters and this is the top of the downstream well on the other side so this is 19 meters which is equal to the bed slope of uh, sorry to, uh, bed of the downstream portion of the canal now we have decided this concrete section as 60 centimeter thick and this level is 17.6 and this is 17 meters Now next is uh, finalization of the dimensions of siphon barrel. The diameter of siphon barrel we found out was or we assumed was 0 0.5 meters and it was found to be okay. The length of each pipe available is 2.5 meters and total length of barrel we took was 17.5 meters. So provide 17.5 by 2.5 that is equal to number of pipes required is <coughs> to connect from upstream well to downstream well we need to connect 7 pipes. So this is one joint, this is the second joint. Likewise we have to this first pipe, second pipe, third pipe, likewise we have to connect 7 pipes to get this total length of 17.5 meters. <coughs> and also this 17.5 meter is a horizontal length as we know the pipe is slightly inclined towards the downstream side. So we have found out the horizontal length only. The horizontal length is 17.5 and there is a level difference between inlet of the siphon barrel that is here we have the upstream well and the bottom level of the upstream well was 18.6 meters and here we have the downstream well. So the bottom level of downstream well was here that is 17.6 meters. So this height difference between that is this height, this height difference is 1 meter. That is if this is the inclined portion of the pipe and this is the if we consider it as a triangle, there is a 1 meter level difference between the uh, inlet portion and outlet portion. And this length is 17.5. So based on this, if we find out this inclined length, it is 17.52 meters. There is only very minor or slight difference between the horizontal length that we calculated. So we are going to take the horizontal length itself. That is because we have already take uh, the actual length that we calculated was 16.8 and for uh, considering each pipe of 2.5 meter length we have take uh, rounded up this value to 17.5 as a multiple of 2.5 so there is already we have provided 0.7 meter increase that is from 16.8 to 17.5 so 
the 17.5 meter will be enough. So we are taking 17.5 itself as the length of the pipe. So we are providing 7 pipes of 2.5 meter length and 0.5 meter diameter. So as we can see here, this is the pipe that we have provided. That is 7 parts. This is 1, 2, etc. And this is a 7 pipes, each of having 2.5 meter width, 2.5 meter length. And this, as we can see, it is slightly inclined towards the downstream side. And this height difference is 1 meter. And this is 17.5. So if you calculate the inclined length, you will be getting the inclined length of the pipe as 17.52 but we are taking this value itself as we have already increased the value from 16.8 to 17.5 to accommodate 7 number of 2.5 meter pipes so that is equal to 17.5 so that is the value that we provide for the length of the siphon barrel Also, as we can see here, if this is the 2.5 meter length first pipe, this is a 2.5 meter long pipe that is provided as a first pipe and between the second pipe you have a joint here. And if you take section, if we are going to try a section here, that will look like this. So this is a section across the joint and here we can see it is, uh, this is a pipe section that we can see and there is a uh, concrete section provided to protect that joint here and uh, similarly if we take a section here or oh, this is section AA that is across the pipe and this is section BB that we have said, just explained this is section AA that is a uh, section of the pipe where there is no joint and that will look like this this is a section of the pipe and that is having 0.5 meter thick and it is given a concrete protection like this with okay this is bedding concrete so that is a section at section of the pipe this is at the joint and this is section without joint next is the final step that is step 8 that is the design of protection works here we are simply providing 2 meter length of stone revetment of 30 centimeter thickness and it is provided on the sides of the canal just before the upstream well and just after the downstream well Similarly, 2 meter length of apron of 30 centimeter thick stone pitching is provided on the canal bed just before the upstream well and just after the, after the downstream well. And if you see that in the figure, let us see. This is an upstream well. Okay. So this is the portion just before the upstream well. So here we can see this is the 2 meter apron provided. Okay. This is a 2 meter apron. 2 meter apron provided just before the upstream well. Similarly, a 2 meter revetment is provided on the side, that is the sides of the trapezoidal section, that is also 2 meter, having a length of 2 meter. So, revetment is for the sides of the canal section and uh, apron is for the bed of the canal section. Both of these are provided to protect the uh, canal bed and the canal sides. Similarly, on the downstream side also, this is a 2 meter long apron provided for the bed and this is a 2 meter long stone uh, revetment provided as 30 centimeter thick. So now we have completed the whole design. Now this is the entire drawing that we have to prepare after, the after this design. Now I will explain the parts of this drawing. Uh, we will start from the longitudinal section. Okay, This is the longitudinal section that is this one and as we can see, from here the upstream canal uh, or the upstream side of the canal comes and this portion, this portion is the side of the trapezoidal section. Okay. And here we provided the revetment, upstream revetment for 2 meter long length and 30 centimeter thick stone revetment is provided there or stone pitching. Now this is a 2 meter long upstream apron. Similarly, we have provided on the downstream side also a 2 meter long downstream apron and a 2 meter long protection for uh, protection for the sides of the trapezoidal section that is provided as 
stone revetment of 30 centimeter thickness now next is this is a downstream well and i have explained this earlier and the top of the down, uh, down uh, sorry the substream well and top of the upstream well is at 22 meters that we have designed earlier and bottom of the downstream well is here that is at 18.6 meters and this is a concrete foundation provided under the well and that is provided at a height of 18.6 to 18 meters so this thickness is 0 0.6 now from here the barrel starts and this is the entire length of the barrel and it is having seven pipes provided with joints in between these are the joints and this is a section of the pipe where joint is provided and this is a section of the pipe where there is no joint that is this is section AA and this one is section across BB now we have this is a top of the embankment provided that is we have provided it was 2 meter length then this is a slope of that embankment and this is a drain provided with bottom width of 1 meter <clears throat> and this is a car track section here the length is 5 meters and similarly on the other side also there is a drain and again there is a small embankment here okay then here also this is a downstream well where the top of the downstream well or the earth side of the top of the downstream well is at 20 meters and top of the other side the canal side and here this top is at 19 meters that is at the bed level of the downstream section of the canal now here also there is a foundation provided for 60 centimeter thickness and the level of this downstream well or the bottom level of the downstream well is at 17.6 meters and this level is at 17 meters now moving on to the half plan at top and half planet foundation so this drawing is a half planet top and half planet foundation so from here we can see <coughs> this is a center line okay this is the center line and below that we have half planet top okay below this it's from here to here this is a half planet top so here we can see this is a one side of the embankment and this is the top of the embankment on one side now this this much portion is a side of the trapezoidal section and this is the bottom of the trapezoidal section now we can see this is the upstream well top of the upstream well or plan of the upstream well so below this line we are providing the top plan and be, uh, above that line there is a plan at foundation level okay here we can see the <clears throat> this foundation stone uh, sorry foundation concrete provided that this thickness is a this what we see here is a, this foundation then again this line this line is a foundation provided under the pipe that is under this pipe here uh, under this pipe. this foundation provided under this pipe and these projections are the joints these projections these small projections as we uh, projections that we see here are the foundation provided at the joint okay so this is a joint okay then we have this is the top of this embankment okay so uh, remaining portion this is uh, as we have said this is a projection of the joint or projection this projection is a foundation provided the joint then we have uh, this is a this much length is a width of the car track that we have provided or the road then this is a, this one meter width drain that we have provided here and this one and this one is the width of the drain and this portion is a minor sloping portion that is provided on both sides okay these two sides are sloping portions provided on the side of the road that is a sloping portion towards the bottom of the drain and this is the other side of the drain this is also the sloping portion okay and we have the top of that embankment here it is two meters and this is 
the sloping portion from that embankment to the drain okay similarly there is a small embankment here also then after that, that is this this portion then after that we have this is a downstream well okay this is a downstream well opening of the downstream well this is a thickness of the downstream well and here we can see the foundation of the downstream well that is this portion okay then here this is a revetment provided on the uh, sides of the trapezoidal section of the channel and this is a apron okay and now we have the final drawing for the final portion this is a end view on the from upstream side that is if we look from this side if we look from this side you will be getting the end view and that end view will be looking like this so here this is embankment of the canal and this is a water level in the canal and this is a upstream well provided there this will be the view if you look from the upstream end and similarly on the other side also and these two are the as we have said earlier this is a section cross section across aa this is aa and this is bb is the cross section at the of the pipe at the joint so that's all about drawing now i hope you have understood everything about design of siphon drop well and its drawing so thank you